Hey, this is Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I am driving the 2022 Subaru Wilderness. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how this vehicle is different from the regular Forester models, and we're gonna talk about driving impressions. So this is gonna be a short and sweet video, but this is a really cool vehicle, and I wanna take a little time to introduce you to it. So let's take a closer look right now. So in addition to having the wilderness model for 2022, and we're gonna go over that, I do wanna point out that this is actually a pretty heavy mid-cycle refresh for Forester as well. So you're gonna see some new features. You're gonna see a better eyesight safety system. The headlights are a little bit different. You've got some new uh, fog light designs there. Um, and, and there's just some other design things throughout the vehicle that are gonna be a little bit different. But the biggest change is gonna be that eyesight system, which gets a little bit, smoothed out and this is the next gen i8 system that you will see for subaru when we get to driving impressions we'll talk about that a little bit so now i want to go over the wilderness proportion portion of this vehicle and what's different the grill is the first thing probably you're going to notice in the headlight that is different or in your in your rear view mirror that is different and it is blacked out and you can see it has that same kind of material that you will find on the cladding. And this, this cladding has a texture to it. I think it looks pretty cool and adds a little bit of visual interest. And the cladding is pretty heavy throughout the vehicle. So, you know, down the sides of the vehicle, and unfortunately because this is gray, you can't really see it, but through the front, through the sides, um, and it all has that same kind of texture. You also have a tow hook. You just pop out this and you will have access to the tow hook. And there is also a standard skid plate. I don't know if you can really see that very well, but standard skid plate. There are also accessory skid plates that are available, but it is standard on the Wilderness model. Another feature that is standard on the wilderness model is going to be the front camera and when we get inside i'm going to show you there's an interesting place that they put that um the 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 display for that uh the wilderness models will also get this uh reflective material here for um when you're driving that it's anti-glare and you have the cladding material again with the texture on the side mirrors so all of them will have this blacked out mirror cap then as you look at the vehicle, you'll see a lot of bronze accents. And that is one of the things that is going to differentiate the wilderness model visually is uh, you know, through the, the badging and the accents. So you've got the wilderness badge here, then you have you know, the Forester and that bronzy accent. Um, then on the ladder roof rail, so these are new roof rails that are unique to the wilderness model. Uh, static, they can hold 800 pounds, which is enough for a, a three-person tent and um, dynamic it is rated at 220 pounds then you have the wheels that these are specific to the wilderness model they're 17 inches the geolander all terrain tires um, that are really good we've been testing them today in well all types of terrain as you can tell <laughs> and before we go inside i'm just gonna pop this open really quick and we'll we'll have a quick look here at the back because this has the um, all weather mat so you can put muddy stuff in here. The backs of these seats are water resistant and stain resistant so again you can wipe it down and clean it really easily. You have black li you know, liner here so if you are putting your bike in you won't see the scuff marks. And uh, I really like this. I appreciate this a lot. If you need to fold down the second row seats you just hit the button there and then you can pop something through. You have that on both sides. 
another thing I will point out, all Foresters are getting this this, this year is um, extra tow hooks rated at about six pounds. You've got an LED light right there. And then as you back out, I will show you that you also have an LED light here. So that LED light will light the cargo area and then this LED light will light the area around the cargo area. One thing this doesn't have that I wish it had is a power lift gate. So had to do a little hop there, don't mind me. So let's climb inside really quick and take a look. And hey, look at that, you've got more bronze accents. So uh, on the steering wheel, on the gear shift knob, the stitching, you can see it on the seats. You've got a little uh, tag there that says Subaru Wilderness. Um, you can see it right there. You've got stitching on the doors. There's also the bronze accent. You have uh, a water resistant material that has this recurring waffle pattern. And uh, so again, easy to clean and wipe down if you're gonna get it muddy or dirty like we have been doing today. And yep, these uh, all weather mats are also standard because again, they intend you to go and get a little bit dirty. So I'm just gonna power this up really quick. And I will point out that, um, yeah, this doesn't look too different. You do have the bronze accents around the speedometer and tachometer. You have the wilderness gauge badging uh, on the speedometer, but you have the central gauge that's gonna look pretty familiar to you. And yeah, that's what it is. But I'll point out, I took my foot off the brake, the brake lights go out, put my foot on the brake, brake lights turn on. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, then you come over here and yeah, not different either. I, I know that this is a little bit outdated. I, I, I comment on it every time, but frankly, people are gonna come in, they're gonna hook up their phone and they're gonna be using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto through there and it's not gonna be an issue. Subaru does this double screen thing and I typically don't like double screens, but this one makes sense to me because you have information here that makes sense. So if you wanna scroll through what you're seeing, you hit the info button on your steering wheel and it will show you the different things so helpful in off-roading, see where your wheels are loading. You know, you have different things here that you just may want to know about or see, and I appreciate that. And the one thing I do also want to scroll through back to here is the fuel economy, because keep in mind, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. We have not been going fast or slow. We've been doing a lot of crawling, frankly, through on off-road situations and getting 25.4 miles per gallon. I think that's pretty decent for an all-wheel drive vehicle. Now, let's talk about that front-facing camera. So you've got a button right here. You can turn on the camera by hitting this button, and this is where it pops up. I, I think that's actually a pretty interesting and okay location because it'll help you fine-tune like a parking situation if you're not off-road, if you're going into a parking uh, spot and you wanna make sure you're not gonna hit the, the um, concrete bump uh, that's blocking it off or the car in front of you. But what, where this is really gonna be helpful in off-road situations is to make sure that you don't hit the rocks um, or you know if you, you're pointed up in the air and you can't see anything, this will help you see what's down below so you know where your wheels are going. And I think that's a pretty okay location. Now, when you pop the vehicle into reverse, you do also get a reverse camera and it has dynamic guides. So as you turn your wheel, it'll show you where you are backing up. Before I get into driving impressions, I do just want to show you the back seat briefly. And I'll flip this back up. And um, so I apologize. I am on a drive program. I do have a driving partner. We do have our stuff in here. I, I apologize for you OCD people. But what I want to point out is this right here. You do have a decent amount of leg room. This is in a far back position. It's leaned back a little bit. And you're going to be able to fit an average sized adult back here fairly comfortably. You can, again, have the um, all-weather floor mats to keep the mud out, and you have air vents as well as USB charge ports, so they do attend for somebody to actually, you know, sit back here. All right, now that we have looked at the interior and exterior of the Wilderness Forester, I wanna go into driving impressions a little bit. Now, if you've ever read anything or seen anything that I've done about the Forester previously, this is the vehicle that I want my mom to buy. So maybe not the wilderness model, but the Forester in general is, I think, 
one of the more perfect vehicles for my mom. Um, now, I probably wouldn't put her in the wilderness model because hopefully she's not gonna be going off-road anywhere or running over curbs. But I really do like the idea of this vehicle and Subaru spent a lot of time telling us about the owner and the person who would be buying this vehicle. It's somebody who's going to take it off-road. And it's somebody who's actually going to be taking it off-road. So for the situations that we've been in today, we've done some dirt roads, we've done a little bit of rock crawling, we've done some off-road situations, and now we are driving on regular paved roads. And I think that the Forester Wilderness handles it all pretty well, because you have to keep in mind, they're all terrain tires on here, and you would expect them to be feeling maybe a little bit knobby or a little bit loud or, uh, I, I don't know, maybe a little bit ish. Uh, but I think it's pretty comfortable. It's a fairly smooth ride. You can hear it a little bit. Uh, but what I want to tell you, you can hear more than anything else, is this. Yeah, that would be the engine. Uh, this is not the turbocharged engine that you are going to get in the Outback Wilderness. And Subaru did that on purpose because they really want this to be differentiated in terms of price so that um, this is a, a less vehicle. It's not, um, it's not going to cost as much. And I, I find that to be an interesting strategy, though, of course, I really do wish that they would make the turbocharged engine an option here because, by the way, that's really nice. Not that this is bad, that's just better. So I think this does pretty well in your regular driving situations. The seats are really comfortable. And, you know, my driving partner and I are both um, petite females, and we think the visibility out of all of the windows on this are really good. We love these big side windows, the belt line is lower, and visibility out the front is really good. And the great thing that I found is that you could pump the seat up really high, which means you can see over the front really, really well. In terms of handling and uh, you know driving on some of the more twisty bits, uh, I mean, this is an SUV. Yeah, it drives like an SUV. <laughs> So it, it does okay, but it's it's not going to be anything, you know, to, to get your heart beating. Uh, in general, I really like the functionality of the Forester Wilderness. I, we did some pretty decent rock crawling and off-roading, and it was just a short little stint. We've got some more coming up. Looking forward to that. Uh, but it did what you needed it to do. I mean, the idea here is this vehicle is not going to be doing in the, the, the Moab, you know, rock walls. It's not going to be doing the, the crazy Wrangler, you know, feats of strength. The idea is this is not the activity. This is the vehicle that gets you to the activity. So muddy things, bikes, outdoor gear, camping things, tents, all of that. And then it gets you to where you want to be so that you can do that thing you want to do. And this is very well situated for that. So overall, I like the way this drives. Um, you know, I, I've never thought that the Forester is an attractive vehicle, let's be honest. Uh, but for what it is, I think it looks pretty good. I like the cladding. I think it looks good. I like the texture on the cladding. And um, I, I, like the, I like the bronze, although I'm going to call them like orange accents. And generally, I think this vehicle works very well. Obviously, the technology is a little bit outdated. But again, it functions the way that you want it to, and um, even if it's not supremely tech forward. So at the end of the day, I'm giving the Subaru Forester Wilderness a big thumbs up. That's it. That's all I've got. So thanks for sticking around to check out the Subaru Forester Wilderness with me. And be sure to check us out on the web at pickuptrucktalk.com. Till next time, I will see you down the road.